Happy Halloween everyone! Today I'm going to share with you how I turned this Dollar Tree dollhouse into this haunted house. So check out the end result here and stay tuned as I show you the whole process. So around the beginning of summer, Dollar Tree had this dollhouse and one other type. Uh, and that's what we're going to use today, as well as this pie pan from the Dollar Tree to use as a base so that I can make a nice little scene to go with the house. A lot of the footage you'll see was taken from my live stream over on Twitch. Uh, I do craft streams there as well as some gaming streams, and we have a good time. You should check it out. To prep my project, I'm going to use black gesso, uh, which acts as a good base um, to help other mediums adhere. Uh, a lot of people will spray paint the dollhouse first to get a base, which is a really great idea and a lot less time consuming, but living in an apartment, it makes it a little bit harder for me to do that, so I went this route. You could also use probably uh, some black acrylic paint as well. I believe I ended up with about two or three coats to get a good coverage. Uh, also, if you can't find the Dollar Tree dollhouses, which I can't anymore, another option would be to check out your local thrift stores for old dollhouses. Um, people can do some really cool things uh, with those old toys. Um, so be on the lookout. You pretty much try to use what you have. Now I'm just trying to trace out where I know I want my house to sit. Um, so I can get an idea of where to place my other elements. And I'm starting with these small pieces of colored shell that I had in my stash uh, to make a cobblestone path leading to the front door. I'm also going to use some popsicle sticks to make a couple steps coming down so it looks like you have to walk up to the path and you can find these at the Dollar Tree. Oh, and fair warning, you may hear some toddler in the background of this voiceover. I'm using hot glue with some Gorilla Glue sticks to fasten down the pieces of shell to the pie pan. I'll use it to attach the little wood steps as well. I did add a strand of glue to the bottom of the step at the base for some extra hold. One product I really love from the Dollar Tree are their jeweled sticker strips, like these ones. Uh, you could do so many things with so many products using these as an embellishment. And so what I'm doing here is wrapping them around the base of the pie pan. Uh, later, the whole pie pan will also be covered in black gesso. And I will highlight these uh, to make it look like uh, embossing on the sides. And I didn't add any extra adhesive to these. They seem to stick pretty well. Uh, especially since I'm going to be painting over them. And here we go with the black gesso. Again, I did about two to three coats to make sure the whole thing was covered. Um, I sort of, you can see, pushed in the brush in between the little pieces of shell so that I could make sure I had full coverage. And it ended up looking like this. So 
So the next step was to work with some moss to make kind of a front lawn for the house. Uh, and I'm, this is from the Dollar Tree. It's a sheet of moss with like a burlap background. Uh, these are really great to use. They do fall apart a little bit. The moss will come apart, but um, overall they work well. I'm also going to be adding some of that reindeer moss uh, as finishing touches later in the process. So I'm just kind of shaping how I want this sheet to go and trimming it so that it fits. And then adding hot glue so it will stick down. The next part was pretty fun. I'm using some tin snips to cut the ends off of popsicle sticks. Uh, you could also use scissors if you don't have tin snips. Just be careful. It will work, but it'll be a little bit more difficult. Uh, I also try to cover them because they do tend to go flying. Uh, and what I'm doing is making uh, the fence border. Uh, and each of these are going to be painted using different uh, products, sprays, distress inks, um, as well as some distress ink oxides, and I will link those for you in um, the description or on my website. You can see at the bottom there, mandascreativeclutter.com. The Distress Ink Oxides from Tim Holtz and Ranger uh, react with water to give you that oxidized, distressed look. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now is spraying some water on the pieces of popsicle stick and then just adding some droplets as well to try to get some different effects. Um, if you don't have these type of products, you can certainly use acrylic paints that you can find at Walmart or even the paints that you can find at the dollar store. Again, uh, whatever you have on hand should work. I'm using a heat tool to dry in between layers. Uh, and then adding more as I go to try to get those droplet effects to stay in there. And this was the end result. I did add some shimmer at the end as well. Now I'm just using the hot glue to glue each one of these down around the border. I didn't go past the house. Um, just in the front because we're going to be doing something different in the back of the house uh, with lighting. So uh, this process took a little bit of time, but I think it was worth it in the end. I think it came out pretty cool. And it's starting to come together. I'm not worried about the bits of glue showing right there because, again, we are going to be covering with moss and other embellishments later. Moving on to some painting, we're going to be using these powdered pigments by Lindy's Stamp Gang. They're called Magicals. This is the color Screamin' Banshee Black. They have a really nice shimmer to them, uh, and it's going to give a cool effect to my house where it kind of looks like moonlight in the dark. I didn't want to have a complete solid color for the house. I kind of wanted to do more shadowing effect, um, but you can certainly again use acrylic paints and paint this house any color scheme that you would like. The pigments can be mixed with most mediums. Um, texture paste, gels, I'm just mixing it with water. Um, you can even watercolor with them. Uh, they're a really cool product. This pen is kind of like a sticky clear ink. Uh, and what I'm, I decided to do was do some embossing on some of the trim of the windows in the house uh, to kind of make it just pop out a little bit. So that sticky ink is going to make this powder adhere 
to my base and then we're going to heat it with a heat tool and it's going to turn to kind of a, a hardened liquid uh, and that is how you emboss. So this is embossing powder that I'm using right now. It's aged silver and I believe it I got it at Michael's. I'm using a silicone sheet or you can use a piece of paper underneath to capture all the excess powder so that it doesn't go to waste. And then if you kind of fold it in the middle, you can have it go right back down into the bottle uh, to save for another time. And now we're going to heat that powder with the heat tool uh, until it turns into kind of that liquid and then hardens. I try really hard to capture this on camera every time I do it because it's just really fun to watch the transition. And that's the end result. Here I'm mixing another Lindy's Magical to paint on the um, base of the house. Uh, this is from a set called Totally 80s and the color is Gag Me with a Spoon Gray. I also used some Flat Magicals by Lindy's which means there's no shimmer and this is the color you're seeing here that kind of has this rusted look. It is Rizzo's Rowdy Red in the Go Grease Lightning set. The next paint I'm using is from the artist Finnebear and it's with Prima Marketing. It is a metallic acrylic paint. Uh, it's an art alchemy set. This is the color Royal Red. I wanted the, the curtains on each side to really pop, so I decided to go with this color. And here I'm using a bit of Distress ink in an orangey color to kind of give the effect of some rust coming down from the windows. Um, so I'm just trying to distress this house a little bit because we want it to look a little bit spooky. I'm repeating the embossing process on the two front windows. Um, and you can see I'm kind of using a little bit of a different color here. It's a little bit more of a gold color. Again, I'm using this because I have it, but some plain metallic acrylic paint would also work nicely. And I did use some just metallic, just metallic paint in some of the other little um, decor sections on the house, as you can see um, at the top of the door there. I'm also using some metallic to highlight this little fencing that uh, the dollhouse already had that just so happens to kind of have a coffin-y type shape. Um, so I thought that was kind of really cool. It was already ready to go for us. <laughs> Continuing on with some paint on these top windows as well. After a few more details, here is where we're at. Now I'm using a metallic wax finish uh, in the color Old Silver. It's uh, another product by Finnebear and Prima Marketing, uh, just to highlight the edges of the roof uh, to give a little bit more dimension. My website again is at the bottom of the screen, mandascreativeclutter.com. Uh, you can check over there for more of my projects using a lot of these same products as well as some of my other YouTube videos. Now I'm just going to be adding some other embellishments. This here is a resin piece from a mold um, that I'm putting right in the middle there. It's a really cool skull. Uh, and I used the same color scheme to paint it as well. I have these corner pieces that I believe are either plastic or resin in my stash and I thought they would look cool uh, above the windows on the bottom so I'm adding those as well.
It is a bit hard to see what I'm doing here, but I'm actually adding a little skeleton hand to the door to make it look like somebody is behind that door trying to prop it open. And I think this is one of my favorite parts. I actually decapitated one of the small skeleton garlands from the dollar store to get that hand. I'm pretty sure one of my Twitch viewers gave me the idea, so thank you for that. Uh, the next thing I'm doing is working on some more embellishments. I'm using uh, Tim Holtz Distress Crayons to kind of dirty up uh, some of these other things. I have a little metal sign that says Beware uh, that I'm going to use kind of like a baseboard on the window, like it's boarded up. Uh, as well as just a little party favor ring uh, with a skull. I'm adding some black color to try to highlight the little nooks and crevices in the skull ring. Um, and you'll also see a couple little skull beads. I got a big package of them from Michaels a few years back um, and they've come in handy in a lot of my projects. Uh, I added a little bit of water to some of the distressed crayon which is kind of like a waxy finish to it but you can add it with water to kind of come up with a wash and so I'm also dirtying up these little skull beads. Next I'm using another magical. This is a green color. I'm going to paint this little metal spider charm that comes from the Tim Holtz ideology line uh, and he's going to be a green spider. And this color is Freaky Frankenlime. I did do a few coats drying in between to get in a little more opaque finish. And now it's time to glue these to the house. This is another part that's hard to see, but I'm actually gluing the little skull ring uh, so that it's peeking in the window on the side. Again, another idea from one of my Twitch viewers, so thank you. I think it came out really cool. And my little green spider went right above the front door there to greet all who dare to enter. And finally time to glue the house to the base. Another little embellishment from the dollar store is one of these little log pieces. And then this is a little table that came with the dollhouse and I'm just giving it a coat of the gesso and I'll add some colors to make it look distressed and it will go on the lawn. I'm going to use this little mini grapevine wreath uh, to make a little spooky tree. So right now I'm just kind of cutting it apart so that I can get some tiny pieces of branch um, to bring together to make the tree. Now that I'm happy with the pieces I have, I'm just going to lightly use some of the hot glue to try to adhere them all together and make some kind of tree form. I think it came out pretty cool. I, I was happy with it uh, and we're going to put it right in the front yard. It was a little tricky to try to glue down and have it stay, uh, but I finally was able to 
uh, get it to stay fairly well there. So I lost some footage um, of more of the embellishments, but you can see here I did add a lot more to the lawn. I have a little bird skull. I have some bones on that table uh, that I showed a little earlier. Uh, made a little broomstick. There's a little skeleton hand coming out of the lawn. Here's what we have for the back so far. Um, that's all going to be covered. Uh, and you can see the little skull peeking out of the window there and my tree. And there you see the hand again coming up, uh, the beware sign in the window, and those little red pieces coming up I felt kind of looked like mushrooms. They're from the little berry twine from the dollar store. Moving on, I'm using some of that Screamin' Banshee Black that I used on the roof um, to add to the sides of the pie pan um, to also give that kind of shadowy, shimmery effect. And I'm painting the little cobblestones in different colors. Um, I lost a lot of footage uh, when it came to the cobblestone path, I actually added some stone effect texture paste to the whole thing uh, to make it look like it was cemented in. Um, you'll see it in the finished product, but I unfortunately lost the footage that showed the process. Um, but it is much like grouting. Um, but you can see, uh, part of why I did that is I wanted to subdue the colors just a tad bit, and I wanted it to kind of level out with the little lawn part. Um, so again, I'm just using kind of the same colors I've been using. That's that royal red that you're seeing right now, and uh, as well as some other metallic colors on um, some of the other little stones. This is one of the last things I did. This is one of those little chipboard stickers from the dollar store that come in a pack. Um, and I'm just painting this little guy using some more of the Magicals. I used the orange color there is Hag's Wart Orange, and I used a little bit of the Freaky Frankenlime to paint the stem. This time I just added a little powder to the pumpkin itself, and then I'm spraying some water to get the color to activate, uh, and then just mixing it around so it covers the whole thing. This is the process I did for the back. I had this piece of paper from a cardstock paper pad and it's got this nice coppery metallic finish. Um, that's going to be on the inside of the house to try to get the lights I'm going to use to add a, a little extra shine. Um, and I did paint the back of it uh, and uh, right now I'm trying to make sure that it fits the back of the house. And that'll be glued down once I add the lights. And here I am adding just a strand from the dollar store of green lights. Um, I'm trying to place each light where I think it'll shine through the most, like by the windows and the door. And I just taped it down with some scotch tape. Then I glued on the backing and added a few more embellishments. And then we came up with this. So I added a lot of moss to fill in some places. You can see down below on the left hand by the stairs those little skull beads. Um, I also added some spider webbing uh, to the tree and to the house. Um, uh, that orange you see there that's kind of like a pumpkin is one of the little uh, embellishments from the Dollar Tree as well, the seasonal berries. Um, let's see what else. I have these little resin bats, ones hanging from the bottom of the roof as well as one on the top. Um, and I've got some moss on the house itself as well. In the back here you can see I painted the whole thing. I did add a little skull embellishment, but you really aren't meant to see the back so much. Um, so the front is the focal point. Uh, there's the front door with the hand, the beware sign, the little broom that I made. 
I just used a piece of toothpick and some bristles from um, some bigger broom decorations that I had that I just cut down. Uh, you can also see that there's a skull on top of the wood stump. And those little green balls there are from the dollar store in the craft section, the little foam balls. Um, they kind of look like apples. I don't know. I just wanted to add a little something in that spot. Um, there's a little bottle brush tree that I warped a little the shape of to make it look kind of cool. Um, you can see all the different types of moss. Uh, and I think everything came together really well. There's a couple other little skulls hiding around in there. Um, and I think that the green light really highlighted everything great. I like the way it plays off of the spider webbing. Uh, all in all, I think it looks pretty great. I was really happy with it. Here it is with the lights off. I really do love the hand in the door. I think that came out great. On the sides of the pie pan where I put those jewel stickers, I just added some of that um, old silver metallic wax to highlight them. And with the battery pack, I just tuck it in underneath the pie pan and set it down. I had a lot of fun making this project and I hope you had fun watching it. Uh, happy Halloween!